men. The second squad of the 3rd platoon of I Company of the 101st Airborne Division. It's December 1944. We're in a rest camp in France after 63 days on the line in Holland. Couldn't ask for a better deal. Even Kinney, our platoon sergeant, feeling his oath, horsing around with the rest of us on the drill field. Hot, hop, hurry, haw, hot, hop, hurry, haw. They signed you up for the length of the war. I never had it so good before. Never missed you getting up your bivouac. You took us along with a passing whack. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. Cadence count. One, two, three, four. Nothing at all. Hardly worth mentioning. They're making me a civilian, that's all. Oh, they're what? 
I wish I had arthritis. It ain't the arthritis. They got a report from the Red Cross that my wife's too sick to take care of the kids. So I let them talk me into accepting the dependency discharge. Well, I'm glad you made it, Pop. Who's you. gonna adopt Rodriguez? He'll be lost without his popsy wopsy. Kip, one of these days you're gonna get a GI bootsy wootsy right square in those GI teeth. When do you leave, Pop? Oh, any day now. I, I just have to sweat out a letter of confirmation from a higher headquarters. Yeah, well. Hey, you gonna miss me, Abner? That's for sure. That's for dang sure. Abner, will you please? I'm sorry, Jarvis. It keeps slipping out. Hey, how about dousing that light, huh? Them Paris trucks will be leaving early. Go ahead. Go ahead. Turn it off. Hey, you. That's my cot you're laying on. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. I I'm a new replacer. Oh, no. that phone number in Paris? I told you a dozen times. 812 Caron 2, Soissons Yeah. Who was that guy who said the war would be over by Christmas? What do you want? Egg in your beer? Here we are, two hours from Paris. talk, then the slow, even breathing as we fall asleep, and the clicking of Kip's false teeth. I had a wonderful dream that night. Paris, a private room, a private bath. Just 
leaflets. A flurry of leaflets, and then it was gone. The ink was fresh, and the printing was in English. Get a load of this, will you? Welcome to the 101st Airborne Division. I like these secret moves. Yeah, we sure slipped one over on the crowds, didn't we? How do they find out these things? Who tells them? I keep them posted. Short wave. Well, somebody does. They occupied France for four years. Naturally, they left a few spies when they pulled out. Hey, that's an idea. Why don't us GIs hire some spies so we'll know what's going on once in a while? Get him inside, Sergeant. On the double. Third foot to him, that corner house. Hey, looks like a good house, Bob. Smoke coming out of the chimney. Yeah, for once we get a break, Rodriguez. It wasn't Paris, but it could have been worse. A nice, warm house with a beautiful girl waiting to serve us hot coffee. I jotted down the name of the town so I'd be sure to remember it. Bastogne. Bastogne, huh? I won't be forgetting this place in a hurry. I wouldn't mind holding up here till Christmas. I hear that's just what we're going to do. All the rumors are good ones. Come on, Mama. Let's you and me take a little walk. Voilà, Mama. C'est l'enfant d'un village voisin qui a été bombardé. Un grand bombardement absolument terrible. Une chose épouvantable est arrivée. Ses parents ont été tués. What's she saying now, Jarvis? That she isn't the mother. The kids from a town near here. Bombed out. Both parents killed. Ah, uh, they all got a sob story. Uh, let's cut a rug, huh, Denise? Dan say. First you gotta fork over another chocolate bar. What you say, please? I said, do you think the rain will hurt the rhubarb? Please. <laughs> you tell me what he says. He, uh... Wants to know if we could have a little coffee. Oh, we oui, the cafe, plenty of cafe, too oh, sweet. Yeah, too sweet. Anything you want. Sure, as long as you pay for it. Ah, uh, they're all alike over here. Yes, they're all alike. Kept scared, hungry, and lonely. Oh, stop beating your gums, will you? Let a man sleep. Yes, yeah, about that time. We sure come a fur piece today. That's for sure. That's for dang sure. <laughs> You want the café? No, no, I guess not. I, I go now? I guess so. I'm all beat up. All beat up? You know, it never fails. Every time you meet a pretty babe, you're either out on your feet or you get the order to move. What you say, please? Oh, nothing, nothing. Thank you for the chocolate. It's all right. Hey, where are you going, Jarvis? God. Oh, Bon, oui, mademoiselle. Je vais aller cacher le chocolat pour Charlotte pour son Noël. What'd she say? What'd she say? He said she's going to hide the chocolate from the kid until Christmas. Oh, brother, I wish I knew for sure we'd be here tomorrow. We'll be here, Holly. Are you sure, Timmy? Yeah, all we got to do is lie around here until the fog lifts so the air corps can come up and win the war for us. Oh, well, in that case, I guess I'll take a chance. I'll see you in the morning, Denise. This may go down in history as the greatest gamble of the war. Good night, Denise. Good night, soldier. Hey, Kenny, are you absolutely sure? Yeah, the CO told us so himself. Well, wake me up early, huh, Denise? It was dark and cold on the street as I went out to relieve Layton. Layton stood in the middle of the street. He heard someone approaching through the thick, wet fog. Up here. Yeah, they will be. As soon as the rest of us can get out. What's up? Yeah, we were a little over to the east. Been there for weeks without firing a shot. Then they started coming. Tanks, planes, everything you ever heard of. Yeah, but they told us it was just a weak little counterattack. Yeah? Well, they'll probably tell you that this is just a strategic withdrawal. Well, take it easy, up now. backyard. His mission was accomplished. Seven beautiful white eggs carefully concealed in a towel. Good morning, soldier. You are looking for something? Uh, no, no, I'm just getting a breath of fresh air. I didn't know you were up. I'll be right back. Well, 
it out. Yeah, that's it. Hey, Jarvis, keep an eye on these eggs. Please. All right, Holly, get your pack on. What? Yeah, me and General McCall have decided to move I Company up on the line. That is, if it's all right with you. Oh, I should have known better. Maybe she'll give you a refund on those chocolate bars. Uh, Kenny, uh, how much time have I got? Ten minutes? Five minutes? Anything you got to do, you better do in 30 seconds. Oh, no! All right, you guys, settle up. Settle up. Settle up. Settle up. said only three or four miles. The morning was gray with the fog. But on either side of the road, we could see the land rolling into little hills covered with a thick woods. It was beautiful country. Beautiful. We never saw anybody hit the ground faster than we did. All except Holly. He had to take it easy so he wouldn't break those precious eggs. Don't put you on your feet. We got that patch of woods to clear. Let's go! Charlie Company? Uh, no, sir. This, this is I Company. 
Pie Company. Oh, this must be the road to New Chateau. Oh, I think it is, sir. Was there a bridge up ahead? Yes, sir, about a half a mile up. Good. Let's go, man. Mm-hmm. We got a good look at them from the ditch. A lieutenant and about a dozen men. Smart cookie, that lieutenant. Wearing his bars on a patrol must be a new replacement. I should have asked if they were from K Company. You know, I got a buddy in K Company. A fellow named Hooper. Yeah, sure hope I run into him. It wasn't bad enough, the fog and the cold. The next morning, something new was at it. No. I never saw snow up close before. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. You didn't hear by any chance that it's kind of cold and a bit on the wet side, did you? Of course you can see snow from Los Angeles, way off on the mountain. Well, close the window, Johnny, and, and fix that hole in the roof. <laughs> Rodriguez? Yeah? Well, where'd you get the branches for your foxhole? Well, where do you usually get branches, Leighton? Oh, well, I didn't know the woods had been cleared. Yeah, sure. K Company moved in a while ago. K Company? Hey, I got a body in K Company. I was in the woods cutting some branches to build a roof for my own foxhole when Leighton went rushing past toward one of the men of K Company. Hey, hey, Mac, where'll I find Hooper? Hooper? I never heard of him. I know he's in K Company, William J. Hooper. Nobody by that name with us. Yes, sir, Red. He came in with a new replacement just the other day. Oh, that was his name, huh? Hey, Sergeant. What's up? The kid that got it last night. His name is Hooper. What do you mean? Got it. Direct hit on his foxhole, a mortar. You don't hear him coming. You don't know what hit you. Well, you... You didn't even know his... His name. Well, he didn't even... His dog died. The snow kept falling. We did get one break, though. The mail was still getting... Stand up, Fred. Wallowitz? Yeah. Well, that's all. Oh, yeah. Just as for me, Kenny? I'm sorry, Pop. It'll probably come up in the next batch, though. You act as if I wanted a discharge. Man, I like it here. Hey, Kenny, what about that patrol? Don't you think I better take it out? I can't let you go, Wallowitz. I want to be sure you'll be here to take over if I have to go back. Go back? Yeah, my feet froze up pretty bad last night. I want three volunteers to go out in the patrol. You, you, and you. You're in charge, Holly. Why am I always volunteering for patrols? Mr. <laughs> Cowboy. G2 says the crowds dropped some paratroops last night. You know that farmhouse we passed yesterday? Well, they think they're hiding in the woods this side of it. G2. Wonderful how they always know what's cooking. Yeah, well, I can tell you something they do know. Last night, some crowds in GI uniforms infiltrated right through this area. They blew up a bridge on the road to New Chateau. Was one of them wearing lieutenant bars? How did you know? Oh, we get all the latest rumors. Rumor my eye. They captured one of them, spoke English perfect, knew our password, planned a deployment, everything. That's incoming mail. Major? How's that? 
I said, what's a Texas Liga? Well, it's some kind of a baseball term. What kind? A safe hit just over the head of the infield. Nobody asked you. How did the Dodgers make out this year? Hey, who's your commanding officer, soldier? Whoever he is, he knows how the Dodgers made out. Let's see your dog tag. What? Come on, come on. We're not taking any chances. Black and see Deutsch. Hey, what is this? Was is dein Name? Oh, what kind of nonsense is it? Schnell, Schnell, Name, Black and see. Hey, just a minute, you. Who's Betty Grable going with? Cesar Romero. Not you. Him. Who's the dragon lady? She's in Terry and the Pirates. What's a hot rod? It's a hot up jalopy. Hello, Joe. What do you know? I just got back from a vaudeville show. I guess they're okay, Jarvis. Thank you, Sergeant. The PFC major, praying for civilians. That's why I believe in being careful. And may I suggest, sir, that you study up on baseball? Yeah, I guess I'd better. And by the way, you might tell your buddy that Cesar Romero is out. She's married to Harry James. Let's go, Corporal. into the woods, maybe half a mile or so. The further we went, the less we liked it. Yeah, they should have sent out a bigger patrol. Well, if you want to goof off. Who said anything about goofing off? Nobody, nobody. I'm just saying the best way is to tell them that you, um, that you heard voices talking in German. Let's say we heard voices talking in Japanese and let you two figure that out. I'm going to sit down and read my morning mail. That paper any good? Best in the world. The Sedalia News. Oh, hey, get a load of this. Our Changing Times by Mrs. Donald Jarvis. Pinch hitting for your favorite columnist and her favorite husband, now on active duty U.S. Army. You knew I worked on a newspaper? Yeah, but a column. Big stuff. Oh, it had its points. I used to get those wire releases and know that I was the first person in town who had the news. I'll guarantee you that my wife knows what's going on in Bastogne. All I know is what's happening to the second squad of the third platoon of I Company. Huh? What's that? Sound off, pal. Password, Texas. Liga. Hiya, fellas. Hi. What's the situation, Lieutenant? Nothing but pine trees in these woods. We've been all through them. Well, I guess our mission's accomplished. Uh, courtesy of Elf Company. Tell them they can stop worrying about this area. Thanks. Well, guys, I guess we might as well party. Yeah, huh? yeah. See you later. Yeah. Oh. Jarvis, did you see what I saw? Yeah. The guy with the bars is the one who brought the patrol through our roadblock last night. Those crowds in GI uniforms, Kenny was talking about. There are too many of them for us. Let's get out of here on the double. Rodriguez got two of them with a hand grenade, but they were coming at us from too many directions. We fought our way back to the ruins of the farmhouse, behind the stone foundation. Maybe we'd have a chance. But just before we reached it, I saw Rodriguez spin and fall. In front of us, out of sight of the cops, was a snow covered wreckage of the jeep. We grabbed Rodriguez and dragged him up behind us. Lay low while we tangle with him, Rodriguez. No, no, take off. There's some tanks coming. Crowd tanks over there. Go ahead, go ahead. They'll never find me here. We left the man in the snow under the jeep, and there wasn't anything else we could do. We reached our foxholes and reported to Kinney. Kinney, with his frozen feet wrapped in strips of blanket. He called in a lieutenant. You sure there were enemy tanks? We saw them, lieutenant, coming straight at us. Kinney. Think we've got enough anti-tank grenades to do any good? We ain't got any. You mind if I make a suggestion, Lieutenant? What? Well, sir, our usual defense against tanks is to call for artillery and then run like a jackrabbit. Our orders are to hold these positions. All right, sir. Well, then let's just call for artillery and keep our heads down. Could send out some bazooka men. If we had any bazookas. Put in a call for artillery. Yes, sir. Oh, that's great. Artillery with Rodriguez lying out there under the jeep. We'll send out a patrol for him as soon as the barrage lifts. With what? A sponge? When the barrage was over, Holly and I went back to the farmhouse. Pop Stazak was with us. Pop was going crazy. Hey, Holly! Holly, hurry up, will you? How long do you think the guy can last out there in this cold? Come on, 
Under the snow was a hand. The palm upturned, the fingers stretched, reaching. The way a man who'd never seen it before might raise his hand to catch the falling snow. Just like going to sleep. We covered him with a blanket and left him there. He was a religious kid. When anybody got hit, he used to say it was God's will. That afternoon, Leighton found a copy of the Stars and Stripes. It was three days old, but it was the first news we had since we'd hit that show. Strategic withdrawal in bulge, it says. What's a bulge? Beats me. Hitler's mighty counter offensive first on yesterday, plunging 20 miles into Belgium. Hey, that's who we are, ain't we? Belgium? I thought it was Luxembourg. Let me see that paper. War Department reports that morale is high all along the fog-bound front. Battle-hardened doughboys fresh from epic-making triumphs. Skip the commercials, Jarvis. Hey, look at that. At Bastogne, the 101st Airborne... Hey, that's us! Men, you will be proud to know that you are making an heroic stand, hurling back the best that von Rundstedt can throw at you. Who's von Rundstedt? A crowd general, the best they got. Hey, Pop, is the 101st the only division up here? It doesn't say, Leighton. We'll have to wait for the next edition. Only you won't be here to read it, Pop. Here's a letter for you, and it looks official. Hey, thanks, Kenny! You want to get back to the aid station, Skinny, before those feet get any worse. Oh, they won't take frozen feet unless they started to change color. Besides, all they got left of the aid station is aspirin and iodine. What about the field hospital? Captured. Medics, casualties, the works. Hey, wait for me, Kenny. I'm a civilian now. It's official. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Relax, Pop. Relax. You ain't going no place. I ain't? All right, get here. Read the letter yourself. I don't care what it says. Nobody's leaving Batstone. Huh? Our headquarters patrol just went by when we were out on the roadblock. And I got it straight from them. We're surrounded. Surrounded? If this is one of your crummy jokes, Kip, I'll knock those G.I. teeth right down your throat. Uh, Take it easy, Pop. Take it easy. It's straight, Pop. I was on the roadblock with Kip. I didn't have the heart to tell you. That's incoming mail, ain't it? You know, I'd get him a lot of trouble for this. There's a shadow over there. Oh, it's just some burnt out powder. You'll die of old age before you see a shadow around here. This fog ain't never gonna lift. Do the planes have to wait? Didn't they ever hear of flying blind? Nobody cares. They just don't care. I don't believe that. Reverend Layton will now lead us in prayer. It might not be a bad idea. We fire a burst where the voice came from and dropped to the ground again. Only some who dropped never moved again. Abner was one of them. Abner was another. Hanson was badly wounded. I saw Holly jump up from his foxhole and start running. I couldn't figure it out. And then Leighton after it. Holly! Holly, I'm with you, Holly! Come on, then! Take off! Battleground will continue in a moment. Johnson as Holly, John Hodiak as Jarvis, 
Ricardo Montaldan as Johnny Rodriguez, George Murphy as Pop, Marshall Thompson as Leighton, and James Whitmore as Sergeant Kinney. jumped to his feet and waved us out of our foxholes. Second squad, follow me. We're going after him. Eight of us made it to the hill. The Germans hadn't seen us. We waited. Then they came into sight, maybe 40 or two, creeping toward the railroad embankment. And then Kinney gave us the word. skirmishes we were ever in. Leighton had had his baptism of fire. He was a veteran now like the rest of us. I thought Holly was running away, Jarvis. That's why I ran after him. How do you know what Holly was thinking? How do you know he was thinking at all? Things just happen and then afterwards you try to figure out why you acted the way you did. I know why I ran. I was scared to death. You just joined the biggest club in the army. Leighton, everybody belongs. <laughs> day we had more visitors. But this time they came with a flag of truce. Two Nazi officers and two enlisted men. I thought they had us surrounded. Halt! Was Wollensee? I speak English. Who is here in command? I am here in command. We have a message for the commanding general. I'll get a jeep and take the officers back, Jarvis. You keep the other two here. Maybe you can get something out of them. I threw all the German I knew at those two krauts, but all I could get out of them was their name and rank. All right, all right, bud. Loosen up. Come on, give us a lowdown. You can talk now. Hitler kaput. How'd you guys like some nice K ration? Chocolaty, yeah, huh? Chocolaty? You know, trying to shock the cigarette and He says he'll talk for a pack of cigarettes. Okay, there you are. Start talking. You're standing in an ultimatum. And for the Übergabe, for the tote. What's he say? They want us to surrender. Surrender or be killed, he says. Us? Well, tell him to take a flying leap at a rolling donut. That's all we learned until Holly came back with the officers. With him was a colonel from our headquarters. The Nazi captain seemed a little upset. The major thinks General McAuliffe must have misunderstood. We have appealed to the well-known American humanity to save the people of Bastogne from further suffering. We have given you two hours to consider before raining destruction upon you. We do not understand General McAuliffe's answer. I'll be glad to repeat it. The answer is nuts. No, sir. No? Is that a negative or a positive sense? Is that a negative or affirmative reply? Nuts is strictly negative. Negative. Tja, dann werden viele Amerikaner dran glauben müssen. We will kill many Americans on your way, bud. Well, I feel better. For once we know what's going on around here. For once we get the story before my wife writes it up in the Sedalian News. They weren't kidding. They poured it on us. Everything they had from every direction. And we drew back still further. No reinforcements, no help of any sort. It looked as if Kip had something when he said, nobody cares. They just don't care. This hole is getting me. You think they'd at least let us stop long enough to build a fire? Don't tell me your problems, Leighton. Tell the chaplain. Oh, yeah, the chaplain. I forgot. Well, we've got nothing to worry about. Holy Joe is going to pray for us at the Christmas service. Let's see. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. If the fog lifts, and they shall run and not be weary, unless they have frozen feet, and they shall walk and not think. If they don't lose too much blood before the medics come up. With another airmail message from the Krauts, propaganda leaflets, this time delivered in a shell which exploded nearby. Holly picked up one of the leaflets. Hey, listen to this. Merry Christmas, soldier, and our deepest sympathy. It's tough being away from home at this time of year. 
especially when you're surrounded and outnumbered ten to one. Don't you feel your loved ones worrying about you, praying for you? Yes, old boy, praying and hoping you'll come home again. Man, have you thought about it? What if you don't come back? Just remember this. Where there's a will, there's a way. Hot chow and safety are waiting for you only 300 yards away. They don't miss a trick, them crowds. Hot chow and safety. Come on on your feet, let's go. The Christmas services were just a little bit different from any we'd ever attended before. Maybe 30 of us gathered in the clearing. The chaplain was just as cold, just as dirty, just as tired as the rest of us. And he talked our language. Good evening. Good evening. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, anybody here from Ohio? Hawkeye Lake, sir. Cincinnati, sir. And I'm from Chillicothe. Any of you men Lutheran? Here, sir. My wife is, sir. Well, so am I. These services aren't just for Lutherans any more than just for men from Ohio. I merely happen to be in your area. In other areas, there are other chaplains of various denominations and religions. All of us Holy Joes are switch hitters. Earlier this month in Holland, I held Hanukkah services for some of the men of the Jewish faith. How'd I do, Levenstein? <laughs> Not bad for a beginner, sir. <laughs> well, now it's nearly Christmas. And here we are in beautiful Bastogne, enjoying the winter sports. And the $64 question is, was this trip necessary? I'll try to answer that. But my sermons, like everything else in the Army, depend on the situation and the terrain, so I assure you this is going to be a quickie. Was this trip necessary? Well, let's look at the facts. Nobody wanted this war but the Nazis. A great many people tried to deal with them, and a lot of them are dead. Millions have died for no other reason except that the Nazis wanted them dead. So in the final showdown, there was nothing left to do except fight. There's a great lesson in this, and those of us who learned it the hard way aren't going to forget it. We must never again let any force dedicated to a super race or a super idea or super anything become strong enough to impose itself on a free world. We must be smart enough and tough enough in the beginning to put out the fire before it spreads. So my answer to the $64 question is yes. Yes, this trip was necessary. As the years go by, a lot of people are going to forget. But you won't. And don't ever let anybody tell you you were a sucker to fight in the war against fascism. And now, Jerry permitting, let us pray. Let us pray for this fog to lift. Almighty God. Well, the organist is hitting those bass notes a little too loud for me to be heard, so let each of us pray in his own way. did we know how bad it really was. It was then that the cooks, the headquarters clerks, the typists, even the walking wounded who'd been brought to Bastogne came back on the line. Every man who could still fire a rifle. No more little foolers to find out where the enemy was. Everyone knew where they were. They were all around us. Holly got out his bayonet and picked it to his rifle. We just looked at him. Slowly, one by one, we followed the ship. I was watching Kinney. Suddenly, he dropped his rifle. He just stood there, staring down at the snow at a shadow of himself on the snow.
wake of the planes came the replacements. New men, fresh men. Men with clean uniforms and strange, clean faces. We sat on the road watching them come in. And then the most beautiful sight of all, tanks. Hey, Daddy, what are them things? Well, that's a new kind of warfare, son. Mechanized, I think they call it. I read about it in the Stars and Stripes. Well, what do you know? What do they think of next? Hey, tank job! Cigarette for Papa? We oui, we. Oui. Got a Stars and Stripes? Two days old, and it's been pretty rugged up here. That's for sure. That's for dang sure. Hey, handsome! Good luck! Well, according to the Stars and Stripes, the folks back home knew we'd get out of this. They heard a relief was breaking through two days ago. Oh, fine, fine. I'd hate to think they've been worrying. You'll be happy to know we're in Belgium, not Luxembourg. Just so we're going back, that's all that counts. You mean you're not happy in the service? I didn't say that. I love it. You found a home in the Army, champ. Me too. Never had it so good in my life. All right, put the tune on your feet. Fall in the Oh, 